Hi guys, Sifu Mark here, and I hope you do enjoy the chat series. And if you do, I would very much appreciate if you could press the thumbs up button, the like, and also subscribe so we can give you more content just like this. In this episode of Chats, we connect with the Vice Chairman of Yi's Honga International Kung Fu Association and the Chief Instructor of the Syracuse, New York branch. His involvement in the martial arts bolstered interest in the bioenergetics field, and he is now a certified biohacker helping in the field of cancer recovery. Among other things, he is also an accomplished actor with many productions to his name. He is truly the definition of multifaceted. Please welcome today, Sifu Sharif Anayel Bey. How are you doing hey, today, hey. sir? How are you, sir? How are you? Very good today. <laughs> I'm doing quite all right. I'm actually even better now that we've connected. We had a little chat earlier. And yes. I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'm, I'm actually really, really, really happy that, I have, that I'm interviewing you today, sir. Ah, that makes me feel really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the interview, sir. Uh, right. Sifu Sharif, how did you start the martial arts? Oh, wow. Well, that's an interesting story. I, um, when I went to live with my father at age four, um, I was born on, on the West Coast. I was born in Long Beach, California. Uh, shortly after my parents separated, my father moved back to the East Coast, moved to New York. And at age four, we went to live with um, my father. And he took us to see, my younger brother and I, he took us to see a martial arts demonstration. And we went bonkers. So it was really like it kind of chose us. You know, it was really interesting. And so at age five, my father bought me martial arts lessons. And that's how it began, man. That's literally how it began. And so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, my whole life, is centered around and rooted from that one moment when my father did that. So my father literally put me on my life path at age four. You know, it's really, really, really interesting when I look back at it. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And you, so since that time, when you started into uh, Ye, with Yi's Hong Gap, yes. like, that, like back in 1990 so from yeah. when you started at four to when you started honga how old were you when you started honga oh wow so we're talking <laughs> you know, i want to tell my age but uh, um from age five till about uh that that time span was from age five to about age 20 and so in between then like i began in taekwondo at age five and then um trained a little bit in Wing Chun Gong Fu years later, and also unofficially in Hong Ga um, in the early 80s, around 83. And so then, yes, in 1990 was when I finally met my Sifu Grandmaster Frankie Chi Wai of the Teng Fong Yunling lineage of Hong Ga. And uh, that was in 1990. I've been with him ever since. Wow. Wow, that is absolutely awesome. You know, yes. that, 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 has, that speaks volumes to your merit because it's not that many people who can actually stick with something, let alone that long. Let me, right? let me so tell you this, Mark. I'll, I'll share this with you. Um, when I was younger and I had trained, you know, unofficially in Wing Chun, I say unofficially, um, I had, you know, because that was a Bruce Lee era, you know, we're all on the Bruce Lee craze. And I had ordered a book of James Yim Lee's book on Wing Chun. James Yim Lee was a student of Bruce Lee and uh, from O'Hara Publications. And I waited patiently for the book, waited for the book. And this, I must have been at the time, maybe 14 years old. And the book came. So excited. I opened it up. There's a letter. It says, we're sorry the book you order is on back order. We'll get it to you promptly, but here's a gift. And the book was Buck Sam Kong's book on Hong Ga. I'm like, I don't want this. It's not what I ordered. But so once again, what I'm doing found me. Really interesting. And then and then right soon after I get this book that I didn't want, what show what pops up? Channel five in New York City on Saturday afternoons, Kung Fu Theater. What are we looking at? 
Gordon Liu, Lao Kao Leung, and all these guys doing Hong Ga, Master Killer and everything. And I went crazy, like, oh my God, I have a book on this very thing. You know, so once again, even Hong Ga found me. This is really interesting. That's awesome, man. It really is. It's, it's yeah. like, um, I guess there is no such thing as coincidence, right? Logerman's all events. We don't believe in coincidence, man. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's absolutely awesome to see how yeah. all that just connected to that. To, to the, absolutely. To, to ultimately, what has become your career now? Absolutely. This is what I do full time. Yep, I teach. Awesome. I teach. Uh, I run a full time martial arts school. That's right. You are the authority in, in my eyes, sir. So I can think of no better person to ask this question, Sifu. Sure. What is Hungar Kung Fu? Wow, huge question. Um, and without talking a hole in everybody's head, let's just start with this. In the early days, and we're talking the beginnings or the early years of the Qing Dynasty. You had um, a group of Ming loyalists. Now, the Ming dynasty was the previous government. And so you had a number of Ming loyalists that were military men, that were ex-rulers, and they wanted to restore the Ming dynasty. So they formed a secret society. And that secret society was called formerly the Tin Dei Wei, which meant the Heaven and Earth Society which stood for the trinity of heaven, earth, and man. The common name for this secret society is called the Hongga or the Hongmun. And so Hongmun. there was the formal name and then there's the common name. So this was in the sense the origin, but not so much as the Kung Fu style called Hongga, but the philosophical and the structural origin that, you know, for the name and the grouping. And of course, martial arts training was a big part of it because they're trying to literally overthrow, you know, the um, overthrow the Manchurians that had taken over and started the Qing, Qing dynasty. For instance, even when we see the saluter leaving on our shirt, right? This is a common, you know, gesture of, of respect in, Ch in Chinese culture, but separated, right? It's an actually a secret sign. Right. The name, the word Ming means bright. And the way you write it is to write the character for a sun and the character for the moon. And you put it together. The greater light and the lesser light together means bright. This is the hand sign for sun and this is the hand sign for moon. So when you put them together in this way, it says you support the restoration of the Ming dynasty or in the Chinese, the, 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 the slogan was Fan Qing for Ming. Overthrow the Qing restore the main. So this is the very origin. And so then there were many different um, groupings of military strategies and techniques by those that were in the society. Okay? And so that's why even to this day on the mainland in Fujian province and in Guangdong, you have different Honga styles. But it wasn't until the patriarch Wong Fei Hong took the top three of those styles and fused them together. He took his father's Kung Fu. He took the Kung Fu of um, Tik Yu Sam um, and his student Lam Fuk Sing. And then he took the Kung Fu of his father's Sifu, which was Hong Hei Kwan himself, and fused those three together and formed what we now call Orthodox Hong Ga. So moving forward from him is when the name Hong Ga was officially associated with a style. You see? So it's so, not like, <clears throat> sorry, uh, pardon me. So it's sure, not sure. like with other other styles where it would be uh, a family style, where it would be like a lei ga or right. choi ga. Right. right. So I always, I always, I didn't know that. I always thought it was like a a family style because of hong ga. But right. Um, then again, I always wondered how come is it like they say that hong ga is a Shaolin style, right? This is what how makes it Shaolin. Style? For, for and I'm glad you brought that up. From you know, this is what makes it challenging. Is a few things, right? In the South, the name Shaolin was used largely by the secret societies as a cover for secret society activity. This is why during that time period in history, the the emperor of China 
was celebrating Shaolin Temple in the North, you know, the original Shaolin Temple in the North, but chasing down people, quote unquote, Shaolin people in the South. This is why. You see, because the, the secret societies in the South were using the name Shaolin as a cover for secret society activities, namely the activities of trying to overthrow the government. Now, Honga is a Shaolin system, not just because of the secret society connection, but also because the traditional five animals, dragon, snake, tiger, leopard, and crane, in that order, is authentic Shaolin Gong Fu. That's why. And Honga later in popular, in you know, you know, pop became popularly known as the Tiger Crane style. Factually, Honga is five animal or five shape Hong Fist. So it's Shaolin Gong Fu because of Dragon Snake, Tiger Leopard Crane. That is authentic Shaolin. That goes way before the Qing Dynasty. So that's our mark. That's that's one of our main marks of authenticity as being able to say we are Shaolin Gong Fu. Okay, so it's Shaolin because of the five animals, right? right? And it's and it's called Hong Ga, not because of a family, but because of its um, association to the Hong Moon. Not so not a blood, more, not a not a blood family, but a fraternal family. Fraternal family. The Hong yes, Moon. okay. Brother. Okay. family. So, so like the other the other styles, uh, like you mentioned, Choi Ga, Lei Ga, Mok Ga, right? And Lao Ga. Those four out of the five in the South were founded by individuals. Hong Ga is big because the, it was the best minds of the Ming Dynasty that came together to put it together to help restore the Ming Dynasty. It wasn't just one individual. Even though the Oral tradition will say Ji Sim Sim Si, and then Hong Hei Guan, and then Luk Ah Choi, Wong Kei Ying, Wong Fei Hong, and then the other lines after that. But in reality, it was a group of people that put together Hong Ga. Okay, so, but the style Hong Ga itself is yes. the martial style that comes from the army of the Hong Mun. I like that. that. I like how you put that. I like that. Now, there's many, and, and to that point again, there's many different ones. But what's called Orthodox Hong Ga is what comes from Wong Fei Hong. It's what Wong Fei Hong put together. Um, so is that the same? Is that the same uh, style of Hong Ga as uh, Chu Chi Ling? Absolutely. Chu Chi Ling's father's name was Chu Kao, and he learned, of course, from his father. Chu Kao learned from Lam Sai Wing. Lam Sai Wing was one of the most popular disciples of Wong Fei Hong. So yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Wing. Um <laughs> that uh okay. I'm not I'm not too versed with with uh with with, with Hong as, as you know, as I told you earlier, I'm more I'm a trolley foot particular. Trolley foot. Uh, yes, but what, yes. when I hear Lam Sai Wing, I think of um Sifu Donald Hamby. Oh yeah. Good man. Right? He... Don is good man, great guy, <laughs> man. Don is my big brother. So Don, you know, Don, Don Hamby Sifu. He is a long time and one of the oldest still active disciples of Pong Baksam, you know, or Baksam Kong, right? And Baksam Kong learned from Lam Jo, which is Lam Sai Wing's nephew. Also, Han B. Sifu has a relationship with Lam Jo's son, Lam Chun Fai. So he has a relationship with Lam Chun Fai as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, you know, that's the second time you you, you mentioned Boksam Kong, and um, uh, what what what's funny is you know, you you're re um, you were referring to a relationship with Bo Bo with Boksam Kong. Um, yes. My grandmaster had a very good relationship with Boksam Kong. Actually, nice. Boksam Kong's um, Chole Fat comes from I know. my grandmaster <laughs> Lake Wihong. <Hong. laughs> that's <know>. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so much connection and it's and it's so great. So the yeah. second question to what is Honga Kung Fu? Is it yes. practical for fighting Sifu? Ah, I love that. So great question. So when we're talking practicality for combat, one of the things that my Sifu, Sifu Grand, you know, Grandmaster uh, Frank Ichi Wise, all you know, emphasizes, you know, the style doesn't fight. I never saw a style fight. I see people fight, <laughs> right? Like, you know, we would ask a question sometimes, like sometimes just to get our students stimulate the right kind of thinking. We'll take a spear, which is a light weapon, 
and then take the the Kwando, which is a heavy weapon. We'll say, which weapon is faster? And of course, they say, oh, well, the spear is faster. Then you throw both of them on the floor and say, okay, which one is moving faster? <laughs> There's no such thing. You see, it's who's the faster person, right? And so it's the same thing with 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 uh, combat effectiveness. It's never the pot; it's always the chef. You know, so I'm not. I can't. I, I wouldn't say I'm a kung ga man. No, I strive to be a kung fu man that expresses his kung fu through the hong ga style. So, kung fu just means what? Specialized skill, a skill that took time and effort to acquire. So I want to be known as a kung fu man that expresses it through the system of hong ga. You see? That and and so that being said, the that being said, the hong ga style as expressed by human beings is only as effective as the time and effort that that human being put into studying the style for fighting. See? Well said. <laughs> well said. That is so true. That yes, is sir. so true. And you know what? <laughs> I'm glad that you defined what Kung Fu is. Mm. Okay? Because yes. it's a great segue to my third question. Sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> In your honest opinion, what is the hardest part of developing Kung Fu? Mm, the hardest part of, of, of Kung Fu training and development is literally, to me, embodying the simplicity, right? Kung Fu, like especially in Hong Kong, let's take four stance training, right? Everyone knows that, that knows a little bit about Hong Kong. We know there's a huge emphasis on foundation. Four stance training. The training is simple. Sit. Make sure your structure is correct. Sit. That's it. Right? What's the difficult part? Doing it every day consistently, nonstop. That the Kung Fu, in other words, what's hard, the difficult thing about the Kung Fu is the Kung Fu. Sustained effort over a long period of time. How consistent are you? My Sifu always says, be stubbornly consistent. He says, be stubborn about it. Like you, you're just gonna do it no matter what. And to do it, to, 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 to cultivate that kind of mindset is how you develop true discipline. You know, that we say discipline all the time, but a lot of times we look at discipline as a, as a consequence. We look at it as punishment. Nah, discipline is when you have the strength to follow your own orders. So nobody else has to make you do it. You do it when nobody's looking. You do it when nobody's paying attention. You do it without lust for an end result. You do it simply to do it. And that is the hardest part, especially for us Westerners. The way, you know, th we're, we're thinking just add water. We're thinking a six-week course. We're thinking, you see, this is how we've been trained to think. Not how good... I can be in the next 20 years as opposed to the next six weeks. You see? So that's to me is the hardest part. The hardest part is resigning yourself to consistent work over a long period of time. The same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over until you could say what's wrong with it. If something is, I'll end the, I'll end the answer with this. My Sifu, when we when years ago when faced with the question of or the accusation of traditional martial arts being stick in the mud can't change stagnant no room to evolve he said that's not true he said we don't have to change something to improve it a lamborghini is not essentially any different from a model t ford still has an engine a transmission four wheels a steering wheel, you get my point? Mm -hmm. Didn't change it, just improved. And then he said this, and of course in traditional martial arts, there's room for improvement. Of course there's room for innovation. Of course you can ask a question. But if you haven't done the thing 10,000 times, you're not qualified to ask the question. 
<laughs> Again, <laughs> very well said. That is true. If you haven't put the time in, man, zip it. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it is so true. That is so true. That's the no. best way to answer to, to, to end that answer, man. That's so true. Yeah. You hit home yeah. with that one there. All right, <laughs> Sifu Sharif. Yes. How has your martial training helped with your professional career? Oh my goodness. Uh wow. You know, we had spoken about this earlier, but something just came to me now that is absolutely essential, even more so than the physical training and what I've gotten and developed and benefited from, from the physical training. It's the relationship. Like, as you know, I'm preaching to the choir. The term sifu does not mean instructor. It doesn't mean that. It implies a totally different relationship. You know, what people see in the West nowadays is what we would call in Chinese gaoling or coach. Where you get your you pay your money, get your lesson, get the pat on the backside, see you later, next class, right? Sifu implies a different relationship. I'm not just learning my Sifu's Kung Fu physically. I'm also learning, you know, how he, from his experience, how he handles problems, how he resolves conflict. I'm not just now, mind you, in Hong Kong, especially with us in our lineage, we only have four handsets. Peng Fong, which was a disciple of, you know, um, Wong Fei Hong, was a minimalist. See? He was a minimalist. We only have four handsets. So after you learn four handsets, what else is there? What are we chasing now? What are we learning now? We're learning, we're chasing how my Sifu thinks about the curriculum. We're chasing his improvements on the curriculum. You see? And so we're learning how he thinks. So I think just like him? No. So I learn how to think about things. So I grow up in that respect. And that bleeds over into everything. That bleeds over into career. That bleeds over into my community work. That bleeds into my family. That bleeds into everything. So he really is like my father. You know, and so, you know, to in short, to answer the question, that's how that is the most impactful thing that my Kung Fu training has had on my professional career, my family life, personal life, you know, relationships with friends and, and other people is that right there is we're learning. I'm learning how I'm learning how. My Sifu thinks about the system, about life, about, you, you, you see what I'm saying? You know, as we say, as we, we have a saying, you know, there's the truth and then there's our pursuit of truth. And in that pursuit, if my viewpoint doesn't change, I didn't grow. Right? And so... My Sifu, at the age of 73, moving to towards 74 now, is still learning and still developing himself. Whereas there's other Sifus that are resting on the laws of what they did 30 years ago. So he's still developing. He's still growing, and we're still chasing that. So he's still providing us with fresh new insight on the same physical material to show how deep it goes. You see? And so we look at life the same way. I look at profession the same way. I'm looking at relationships the same way. You see? I hope that answered the question. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And it even, it even gives me more, more perspective on, uh, on, on different things. For example, uh, uh, you're saying that your Sifu is in his 70s, going into his mid-70s. And yes. he's still discovering things about himself and about about his, his Kung Fu. And um, that shows me the uh, benefit of um, keeping the students or beginner's mind. Right? Yes. Because yes. through keeping that mindset, you continue to grow even when you, you know, 
No, well, even if you keep that mindset, you never think that you you have reached any kind of level. You just keep on going. I'll share this with you. Yeah, I'll ahead. share this with you to um to to that point. You know, and I got to give what I'm about to share. I got to give my Sifu and my older training brothers the credit because they helped to develop how I think. So a number of years ago, an individual who trains um, a more modern martial art, he says, you know, Sifu Bay, we respect you. You know, we really respect you. We know, you, you know you're, you're pretty good. I'm like, fine. He goes, but let me ask you, how were you able to improve in a traditional art and not cross train in other systems? You know, how are you able to do that? You know, how can you continually improve with just one system? Right. And wow, the, the, it caught me off. The question caught me off guard, but this would immediately came to mind. I'm like, wow, an analogy. I said, human beings have been building homes for thousands of years, thousands of years, for thousands of years. They've, you know, we've gone from simple huts to now skyscrapers, but the hammer and the nail have not changed. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we haven't changed function, because our right? objective isn't to improve the hammer and the nail. Our objective is to improve what we do with it. Yes. So my objective yes. isn't to necessarily improve the style; it's to improve me. See, and now when I improve me, I give greater honor to the system. Yeah, you see, but it's through improving me. So it's just the perspective. The system serves the human being, but of course we have to. There's a had to be a balance. There has to be dedication. There has to be persistence. There has to be hard work given to the system, mm -hmm. and then the return is personal benefit, personal power, personal improvement. See. Once again, it's never the pot, it's always the chef. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Sifu, I'm not going to say this because of the color of your shirt. I'm going to say this because of what you're saying is absolute gold. It Thank literally you. is, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> because it's true. It's absolutely true what you say. It's a matter of perspective. Yes. Um, and you know that, and 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 that train of thought can be applied to so many different other parts of life as well. It's all perspective. Absolutely, Perspective. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. definitely. <laughs> so, speaking of perspective, right here, here, here is a question that I am itching to get your perspective on. Right, sure. if you could teach the new generation of martial artists only one thing, whether mm. philosophy or technique. You choose. What would it be? Wow, I I I'd have to say, you know, my seafood teaches us that the physical training is more for the juniors because, especially with our system, we're building in our gong fu builds certain mechanisms and and things inside the body, and then we spend the rest of our lives trying to figure out what that thing can do, right? And so. He teaches us that the physical training is more for the juniors, but the philosophy is for the seniors, right? If we could, you know, if, if, so if there's anything that I would teach the youth or pass on, it'd be the philosophy. That's what it would be. It would be the philosophy because, you know, and we're living examples of it. Our Sifu, when he does senior workshops with us, it's at least 50% philosophy. Why? The Kung Fu is already built in. If he could change the way we think about what we're doing, you jump two or three levels almost immediately. You see? So if we can reshape how the youth think, see? Reshape, in other words, if we can provide an alternative or a better uh, platform that they can rest their psyche on and begin to build thought from there. Like, here's an example. The way we mostly are taught, even in martial arts, 
for there to be a winner, there has to be a loser. That's how we're talking. True. True. Well, that's not conflict res resolution. That's conflict escalation. Or it can lead to conflict escalation. Whereas the character in Chinese martial arts, the character Mo in Cantonese or Wu in, in Mandarin, is composed of two things. One is a weapon. The other means to stop. So our idea of military or martial means to end the conflict. We don't start it, but we definitely finish it, ideally, right? So what if instead of the highest ideal in martial arts being to physically defeat the enemy is to win them over here? Now I have an ally. Now I have a friend. Now I've broken the code of for there to be a winner, there has to be a loser. And I've demonstrated that we both can win, even in a situation that's adversarial. You see? Mm. And that, so that's a change of philosophy, a change of how we think. So, so in short, that's an example of I want to pass philosophy. Let's think different. When we can think different, we can create a new world. All right, all right. Is there uh, any one philosophy in particular that you'd probably like to pass on? Yes. Um, so there's a style of Kung Fu called Xing Yi, right? Mind and intent. The, yeah. yeah, okay. So the name of the style, the, the, the motive behind the naming of the style is very similar to the motive behind the founders of Tai Chi calling it Grand Ultimate, or Bruce Lee calling what he did Chi Kung Do. They're not naming their methodology, they're naming their objective. You see? They're naming their objective, right? Tai Chi, the Grand Ultimate level. You see? Chi Kung Do, extreme uh, um, um, refinement, extreme um, efficiency, right? That Bruce Lee, because he was a student of Krishnamurti, right? The Diamond Sutra, get right to the, to get, just get right to the heart of the matter, quick, right? Um, Xing Yi, mind intent, meaning my heart and my tongue are not at variance, meaning what I think and my expression are so close that they're the same. The philosophy behind this, to me, is there's no such thing as duality. Duality itself is an illusion. We have polarity, and polarity appears to us as duality. So all of us are really one. Every living thing is bound by cords to every other living thing. That would be the that would be, you know, the, that's what came to mind when you asked the question. <laughs> Deep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you talk about Bruce Lee being uh being student of Krishna Murthy. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> Shifu Bay, that is wow. Yeah, he was. He was a student, you know, he was a, he was a, a huge, you know, when he when he went to college, you know, he, he was a major, he had a major in philosophy. And he was a big, big fan of Krishnamurti. Big fan. Yeah. As a matter of, if you're familiar with Krishnamurti's readings, you read the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, you're like, oh my God, it's, it's Krishnamurti. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 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 now you're making me want to go and read Krishnamurti now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, stuff. just, just for that, just so I could see that similarity between Tao of Jeet Kune Do, which I've read. And, yes. uh, but Krishna Murthy, I have not. So uh, I'd like yeah. to, like to cross-reference that. That's that's, <laughs> that's 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 my homework now. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Very good. <laughs> Definitely. Let's go ahead and segue, sir, into our last question for you. Yes. Right. How can you be contacted? Oh wow. Um, I'm on pretty. I'm on a few um, uh, social media platforms. You can catch me on Facebook, Sharif and Ail Bay. Uh, catch me on Instagram. Um, fighter healer on Instagram or also Sharif Bay on Instagram. Um, YouTube, you can catch me on YouTube as well. Just type in Sharif Bay. So yeah, that, that that's it pretty much. 
All right, all right. Information <laughs> for Sifu Sharif Anil Bay will be in the description down below. Also in the description down below will be a link for Faye U Shoes. If you need Faye U Shoes, go ahead and click the link down below to get the best deals, the best prices, all at Faye U Shoes. Sifu nice. Anil Bay. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for you, your sir. time, sir. Absolutely. All right, I'm sorry, I had a I had a pen in my in my hands. <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll give you better respect. There you go, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time, Sifu. Thank you. Right, so it was much. an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Right, oh, I have learned so, so much. much. <laughs> right, you are a great teacher.